I took a pajama set that has seen better days, but I didn't want to deconstruct it because I paid a whopping $5 for it and I'm going to wait until it is in shreds before I give it up. That was a video I made a little over a year ago, and this is the pajama set in question, and while it is not exactly in shreds, I do think that it might be ready to retire. And as I found some flannel fabric at the thrift store, I think it may be time to make another pajama set. I deconstructed the torn up two-piece garment, pressed it flat, and used it to make a paper pattern. And here are what the pattern pieces ended up looking like. <laughs> I found three and one quarter yard of flannel fabric at the thrift store and I didn't really love the print, but it was flannel. 100% cotton, super soft, and honestly, the print has been growing on me. On a separate visit to the thrift store, I found this flannel fabric and got just a little bit excited at the idea of also making a pajama set for my mom. I'm feeling bummed. I've been figuring for far too long how to make this work. I don't know where my head was at, why I ever imagined that three and a quarter yard would be enough fabric to make a pajama set. It's only 42 inches wide. I don't know what I was thinking, but since I made the plan and I started executing the plan, I'm having a hard time letting go. So I'm just feeling bummed. I did figure that if I were to make it a short sleeve pajama set, I could make it work. So I might do that. The other bummer is that the fabric I had in mind for my mom's pajama set, I measured it. This is one of the problems when you purchase from the thrift store and you are too afraid to unroll it and inspect it in store before purchasing. Even though the label said three yards, there were more like two and three quarter yards at 42 inches wide, so there's not enough to make a pajama set even with short sleeves. So I am bummed about that as well. Okay, I did have a thought. I am considering, since I can't make her a pajama set, I am thinking, what if I just made her a robe? because I would just use the top pattern. I could still make it long sleeve. I would just elongate the pieces and make a tie and some belt loops and she would have a flannel robe. The only problem with that is that it's kind of a thin fabric for an overgarment. So I would have to line it and probably interline it to make it heavy enough to be a robe. I... <laughs> I don't know how I managed to do this. Every time I try to do a simple project, it inevitably grows out of control and becomes more and more complicated. I don't know how this happens, but it's happening again. I think I'm just gonna have to go with it. All right. Truthfully, I wasn't really actually upset about it, only slightly frustrated with my tendencies and as things are a wee bit heavy, it felt therapeutic to do some lighthearted complaining about silly things. I cut out all the pieces and had just enough. These are all of the pieces for the top. It was difficult to get it all in one shot arranged like this, but instead of rearranging it, cause I'm lazy, just turn your neck to the left or the right 90 degrees and it's all in one shot. And here are the pants, which easily fit into a single shot. I'm not going to go into great detail on how I put this together because, well, I've already made a pajama set video and while that was not a great tutorial, I still think it would make for a dull video if I explained everything. And really, how many of you are going to follow this as a tutorial and make a pajama set anyway? No, really, for real, I am curious. I want to hear about why you are here because the fact that my channel has any subscribers at all still boggles my mind. And I want to hear about you.
Oh, and since I did give you that shot of all the pattern pieces, I would like to clarify those two little rectangles were sleeve cuffs, but I ended up just turning the sleeves under and stitching them into place instead of adding cuffs because one, that was easier, and two, it was easier. And with that, my pajama set was complete, so I started on my mom's robe. All right, okay, so essentially I'm gonna be making the same shape as the pajama top that I made for myself, except I'm going to be making it longer, also, I'm going to be changing it from a shirt collar to a shawl collar. So all I have to do here is just kind of follow along, same shape until I get to about this point, and then I'm going to kind of widen it, circle it around, and then make this a little bit taller here for the back collar. Like this. And even though she is a little bit smaller than me, I did widen it just a little bit because it is supposed to go over her pajamas. Then it was time for some cognitive development. My mom and I started putting a puzzle together, together, it was one of those puzzles where the pieces are so similar that they can easily steal another puzzle piece's identity, which made for a frustrating puzzling experience. Puzzle putting together experience. Yeah, it was kind of puzzling actually, now that I think about it. I ended up spending two hours longer than I had planned working on it, but it was so hard to stop once we started. I don't usually partake of puzzles. It's a dangerous portal into a vortex of obsessive behavior, but we managed to escape and the next day I went back to work on the robe. For interlining the robe, I used this queen-sized bed sheet that I found at the thrift store. It's 50-50 cotton and polyester, and I planned to use it for making muslins, aka mock-ups, but I felt it would be a great interlining for the robe. I was incorrect, because after I interlined the first one, I realized it wasn't the weight or thickness that I was hoping for, so I cut out another layer and interlined it again. Satisfied with the weight and thickness, I cut the lining out of this rather lengthy length of black lining fabric that I surprisingly also found at the thrift store. I jumped over to a different part of the project to keep the tedium at bay, and I interlined the sash with some lining fabric before stitching it together. Turning an 80-inch tube inside out was going to be a challenge, but I didn't want to spend a lot of time figuring it out, nor did I want to spend a lot of time methodically pulling it through with just my fingers, so I took my trusty loop turner, even though it's only about a foot long, and did my best to hold onto the end so I didn't lose it in the tube, and stuffed and squished the 80 inches onto that one footish loop turner, caught the end of the fabric, began pulling it through, lost the end of the fabric near the middle, and then caught it again. And managed to pull it all through. Yeah! I gave it a good press, turned the ends under, and the sash was complete. I miraculously remembered to cut out some pockets. Unfortunately, I couldn't make them out of the flannel fabric because there was no more left. So I just used the lining fabric and then covered the very edge of the pockets in the remaining flannel scraps so that they would look as though they were matching the rest of the robe. And I did a similar thing to the lining front because it would flip over as the shawl collar. Unfortunately, though I did measure it, the front pieces that were extended to accommodate a shawl collar were not long enough. I was missing about an inch on each side for some strange reason, and so I had to patchwork it together, unfortunately. I was rather displeased with this, and was considering throwing it all into the garbage can. But I didn't. I kept going. Side to side, going around the pockets, matching the shoulders, front to back, and then I called it a night, imagining that I would probably have to throw the robe away tomorrow. But tomorrow came, I tried the robe on, and it was actually turning out better than I thought it would, so I felt motivated to continue, and attached some sleeves. After that, I attached lining and robe together all along the front edge, stitched that into place, and also basted the sleeve ends together. And then I seam ripped the basting stitch that I had just stitched, because I was supposed to turn the robe and lining right side out before basting the sleeve ends together. So that was a bummer. I turned it right side out and then stitched them together the correct way. Eek. Only the cuffs and the hem left to finish the robe, and then I can take a bath and go to bed. Yay. Just ran out of thread. Sad. And the 
hits just keep coming. My life is so hard. This turned out way cuter than I thought it would. I did not think it would turn out this cute. I didn't think it would turn out at one point. I was ready to scrap it. It's kind of cute. And it's really warm and cozy. I really like it. Oh no. Now I want to keep it. <sighs> I'm going to give it to her. I am. It's just really cute. And now I want one for myself. And actually the collar doesn't look bad unless you look at it. 